They don't teach us this stuff in school, yet they expect us to have a bajillion credit cards by the time we're 30. It doesn't make any sense. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down a little bit about my credit card story, my mistakes that I've made, and all the things that I wish I could tell my younger self before getting that first credit card, hoping that my lessons will teach some of you. My name is Edwina, and I help artists, yogis, and hipsters alike feel smart about money. I am not a financial expert by any means, but I find this stuff super important to understand and just super interesting. If we all are making money, we should all be able to to talk about money and have an in on what this secret is about investing and credit cards and all that stuff. So without further ado, here are a few things that I learned about credit cards just through the journey of having them. So nine things I've learned about credit cards that I wish I knew from the get-go. Okay, thing number one is that getting your first credit card is hard. I feel like most of us, when we apply to get our first credit card, we're kind of just like, okay, Everyone's supposed to get a credit card at this age, right? I'm like 18. And then you go online, you Google credit cards, and then you just apply to a bunch, and you ask for income, but at the same time you're like, Girl, I don't even know what on, is on my Tinder profile. How am I supposed to know my income? Or I'm not making income, I'm a student and all these things. So you're, you're getting rejected, you're applying for more credit cards, which is not necessarily the best thing to do. Yeah, getting it for your first credit card is hard. A lot of the time, a lot of uh, lenders will find young students who have no income, of course, to be risky borrowers and don't want to give you a credit card. Basically, if you're getting, if you're having no luck and no one will accept you and no one will give you a credit, you're going to have to build your credit. There are different ways to build credit. One way that people suggest is getting a secured card. I won't get into exactly what a how it works, but basically a secured card is a lot like a debit card except it's a credit card. So it's a credit card that you're required to pay back in full. So if anything, it teaches you from the beginning good credit habits because you're required to pay it back in full. Um, so it can be a good place to start. There are people that argue now that you don't necessarily need a secured credit card in order to build credit. The general line of thought here is that if you don't get accepted by any credit card companies and you're having a really hard time, like I was, then you're going to have to build credit somehow, and that can be done in many different ways. Second thing that I had to learn when getting a cre credit card is how old you have to be. Under the Card Act, which was passed in 2009, the law requires you to be 21 years old in order to have your own credit card. You can have, you can be an authorized user of a credit line before then, so you, technically you don't have to be 21, but to have your very own credit line, credit card, without anyone else involved, you have to be 21. Okay. Third thing is APR, and this can sound like a really intricate and complicated process, even just talking about it, I'm like, am I even going to be able to explain this, but there is a really super cool, easy video by Khan Academy, which I will link down below, and I actually watched it this morning, it's that man that I watched all throughout high school explaining how APR works. Right here tells me that they compound the interest on your credit card. The least that you can do and the, the thing that you really need to know in order to be responsible about it is to understand APR. Understand that the interest rate that you get charged when you don't pay your credit card back in full is really high. And it doesn't seem high when you're paying month to month and you're like, oh, I only paid 15 more dollars, 10 more dollars, 5 more dollars, whatever. But it really adds up. The average annual percentage rate is around 15%. When you put that against average percentages for it's just kind of crazy and if you don't pay it back in full you're paying that interest rate in addition to what you spent it's just really important to understand this concept because it will motivate you to pay your credit card back in full every single month fourth thing is fees 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 i feel like we all sign contracts and there's all that fine print and all of that stuff saying, okay, there's this international fee and that fee and this fee. And we're like, yep, 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 sign, 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 give me my credit card. You don't know really what fees you are signing up for until you get charged one of them. Put down below, comment a fee that you didn't realize you were signing up for that you got charged. Uh, for me, so I learned the hard way that you can't take money from an ATM on your credit card. That will give you a huge uh, fee. 
you can get cash back at like the grocery store for example you so you can take cash off your credit line that way but you cannot use an atm i also have been charged international fees when traveling abroad with my credit card i do have a few credit cards that don't charge this fee which is awesome so now because i travel a lot i really look out for that if i'm applying for a new card on your debit card you definitely will be charged an international fee or most likely there are other fees that you have been charged that you were like what right, this sucks or late fees even, I've gotten charged overdraft fees, all that stuff. Write it down below. Number five is something I wish I knew. You can negotiate with credit card companies. The other day, for example, actually, I didn't realize that on this credit card I have, it's a new credit card. The date for payment is at the end of the month, whereas normally I set my dates for the beginning of the month, so I sit down and pay all of my credit cards back in the beginning of the month. And as a result, I was late and I was charged around $30 or something for being late. I have the power to negotiate. I called the credit card company. I said, hey, listen, I didn't realize I made this mistake. Nah, nah, nah. I always make my credit card payments on time. Is there anything that you can do? Surely the woman on the phone sent my credit history. She saw that I was a responsible cardholder and she was like, yep, we can absolutely waive that for you. No problem. So in order to protect your credit score, because late payments can affect your credit score, you can negotiate. You have the power to negotiate. And it's not just for late payments. Don't feel powerless against credit card companies. You do have power to negotiate. It's just taking the small step of calling up and asking. Sometimes you don't even need to go in with a negotiation mentality. It's just opening up the question and asking, hey, I'm going through this situation or I made this mistake. Is there anything that I can do about it? And people on helplines are required to give you good customer service. So it's more than likely that they will try to help you in some way. Number six is utilization. I already said, and I feel like this is common knowledge, you should be paying back your credit card in full. But if your goal is to get a good credit score and, you know, smash out that 700 plus credit score, then you should really only be using about 20 to 30% of your credit limit. There's this huge misconception of, oh, I'm allowed to spend $1,000 on this credit card. So you do spend $1,000, but actually credit bureaus want to see that you're only using 20 to 30 percent and you're paying it back in full as long as you're doing it that you're not you don't have to continue to monitor your credit score it you can just have peace of mind of I only use this much and I always pay it back in full your credit score is going to be good unless your identity gets stolen or something and credit cards the way they make money is they want you to spend more than you're able to afford to pay back which is why they keep offering you deals and they offer you points and travel and all these things and they increase your credit limit hoping that you'll spend more than you're capable of because they make money off of you when you do have to pay off interest and when, when you don't make that pay, uh, payment at the end of the month they don't want you to be able to pay your card back in full they do not want you to be responsible so the next thing I learned is credit scores so when we get credit cards we're all obsessed with our credit score but there are a lot of misconceptions that I didn't understand the first is that your credit score there's this misconception that if you check it a lot then that can lower your credit score and that is partially true. So there's something called a soft inquiry and there's another thing called a hard inquiry. And get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> a soft inquiry is basically when you check your own credit score. So that's like a lot of the time website when you go to pay your credit card, they'll be like, hey, check your credit score. You can check that and not be penalized and have your credit score go down if you check that number. It's when you make a hard in inqu inquiry. So that's when someone else is checking your credit score in order to get you a loan, in order to get you another credit card. Every time you ask for another line of credit for something, that's when people have to check your credit score in order to grant you or decide if they're going to grant you that credit or not. And that's when your credit score goes down, which is why you don't want to be applying for a lot of different credit cards. You want to be very vigilant about what you're applying for and what you're not applying for and what. I've actually heard and write in the comments if you've heard this as well, that if you apply to, if you're applying for, if you're looking for a credit card, uh, it's good to be strategic about it and make all of those applications in the same day because if they're all in the same day, then it won't hurt your credit score or it'll only bring your credit score down a certain amount. But if you apply for different credit cards throughout the year, then your credit score would go down more. I can't confirm that, so make sure you comment down below. Again, this is all to get the conversation started. We're all in this together, so that's what I've heard. But at the end of the day, it's just important to know that every time you have a hard inqu inquiry and you apply for a credit card or you apply for a loan, that is something that's going to affect your credit score. Thing eight is that 
how credit bureaus work, credit scores work, and how credit reports work. Basically, there are three major credit bureaus in the United States. Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And these are the people that monitor your credit score. However, one credit card company doesn't necessarily need to report to all of these, all three of these companies, they might just report to one. So you could have a really great credit score with one of these companies, not have any credit history with another, and have a really poor credit history with another. So it depends on who's reporting to what. As a result, in order to get the best credit report, a credit report is a more profound, deeper insight into your credit use and your health as a credit card holder, that is way more useful information than it actually a credit score is, which we don't talk about a lot. You have the right to see your annual credit report once a year, every year. In order to do that, all you need to do is go to annualcreditreport.com. I'll put that link down below and apply, and you can see all the things that you've ever done that have affected your credit history and credit score. Now, on the, credit, on the annual credit report, you're not necessarily going to see your score, but you'll be able to have an idea of whether or not you're healthy. And it's just really uh, insightful information that everyone should know about themselves. But I think at the end of the day, my whole point in this is just don't obsess over your credit score. As long as you're paying your card back in full and you're being mindful and you're being aware and you're not just spending for no reason, you will be fine. And the last thing that I learned is how many credit cards I should have. So I got one credit card at a time because I really wanted to make sure that I was responsible and I actually credit cards really scared me. I knew that I should have one and it made life easier in terms of making purchases online and all this stuff that we deal with now in this century. So I, I got my first credit card because, I don't know, I was a student and I felt like I needed it to be honest. And then the second one I got for travel and I got the third and the fourth if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, because after it was after a long time of having credit history, but now I'm trying, to, I travel a lot, so I'm trying to work out how travel points work, and I'm trying to get into that kind of whole culture. I'm not gonna talk about that yet, because it's not something that I've at all mastered. It's not something that I can advocate for. I'm really just discovering it, and the only reason I'm allowing myself to do that is because I know that I'm not spending much on my credit cards, and I am paying them back in full, and I'm really not I'm being very responsible about it. I think the worst thing you can do is just open up a credit card because you think it's free money. Do not do that. You will end up in a debt snowball and shoot yourself in the foot. So all that to say, this is a learning process. I am not talking at you like I'm an expert. I'm not. I'm really just trying to tell my story in hopes that you have the same questions that I did and that I do. I still have questions all the time and I take the time to research this stuff because I find it interesting and I find it important and I want to have more conversations about this. So if you want to ask dumb questions but feel smart about it and realize that you're not the only one that has these dumb questions, join our, my Facebook community, um, Naked Money. We all get naked with our money questions together um, I will put that link down below or you can go to nakedmoney.biz to join the community and get some insightful tips on how you can be a responsible financial adult and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps my channel and it really helps get the message out to all of us who need to feel smarter about our money thank you and I hope you have a good day bye